What's up, Wolfpack? I'm Dylan Brazier. And I'm White with the one and only. And today is Friday, November 20th, and we are here with your Disciplined Nothing. It's Friday, so I don't even know why I say this anymore, but you know what that means. Yeah. Ah, last one before break. <laughs> Yes, sir. Now let's pass on over to Kaylee with Pop. What's well, Poppy Wolfpack? I'm Kaylee Ota, and this is Pop, where we pop in and show you posted pack. Last pass it over to Emily Johnson for your Wolf of the Week. Hi, my name is Emily Johnson, and I'm your Wolf of the Week. My favorite memory at CL was playing varsity softball. Um, I got to meet a lot of new girls who share the same interests as me, and we got along really well. Um, we had a lot of fun playing on the field and off the field, like during our bus rides, it was just a good time. Um, but the best part was probably the home games because our friends and family got to come, we were on our own turf, and we just had a good time. I've been playing softball since I was about six years old, so 11 years now, and I continue to play because it's always been my dream to play at the next level. My parents and coaches are always the ones pushing me to my fullest potential, are always telling me that there's things I can do to get better and to never quit. Um, they always support me, and I'm very appreciative of that because I wouldn't be where I am today without them. After high school, I plan on going to a four-year at the University of Texas at San Antonio uh, to continue playing softball. Right now, I'm undecided in my major, but I'm hoping I figure it out soon. Thank you, Emily. Good luck with the rest of the year. Before I go, C would like to recognize due to our current situation, it's normal to feel sad, stressed, confused, scared, or angry. If you need to talk to someone, here are some links and phone numbers. Well, that's all I have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Kaylee Yota. See you all next week. Thank you, Kaylee. Hey, Dylan, did you hear about the bulletin? No, I haven't, but I heard it was really cool. <laughs> for sure it was. But we have the winners. We do indeed. You want to kick it off? With the best COVID, COVID team pumpkin, your winner is Anya Axel. The person who had the most scary pumpkin was Tana McKinney. And also, Olivia DuPont and Mrs. DuPont, who won the award for the most resourceful pumpkin. Good job, y'all. Last but not least, we have Miss Anderson and Tia Ortega, with the, who won the Dynamic Duo category. Congrats to all that one. Those were actually people cool pumpkins. I know, right? But hey, Wyatt, are you going to college next year? For sure. I got to get out. My, I just hope my experience isn't affected by COVID. Exactly. Let's take a look how colleges are preventing COVID. Here's Eden with more. As the end of the year approaches, most juniors and seniors have the same thing on their mind. College. Which one am I going to? How much does it cost? Do I even have the requirements to get in? Do I want to live that far away from home? Are all things that rack through our minds. However, we're in the midst of the pandemic. So how is college going to be for everyone? Well, a lot of freshman college students just finally arriving to their college experience have ended up just packing it up and returning right home after arrival. So how are colleges even working to prevent COVID? If you're really looking for that college experience, is it even worth applying since online is most likely the only form of school? Well, because mainly only young adults attend college, the likeness of them suffering a severe outcome is low. However, when you think about older professors, janitorial staff, and other faculty members that are at much greater risk. The CDC, or the Center for Disease Control, has set clear protocols for schools to adhere to, but there's little to no evidence that universities and colleges are actually applying them. According to the New York Times, colleges and universities as a category has been deemed hotspots for virus transmissions. Even in these hotspots, most colleges haven't been persistently testing students. So knowing this information, why haven't colleges implemented mandatory testing to ensure the safety for everyone? The answer? Well, you guessed it, funding. COVID tests can be up to $100 each. Some colleges have found cheaper testing. Look at the University for Illinois at Urbana and Champaign. They've reduced to saliva testing, which brought the cost down to $10. And even with this huge price drop, officials still estimate they're spending $1 million a week on testing. And because not all colleges can afford that, some have resorted to only testing the most at risk or the most visibly symptomatic students. This seems logical, but experts say that up to 40% of people are asymptomatic meaning that they would test positive for COVID, but they did not show symptoms and they will not develop them. Some students have even gone as far as suing their universities because they did not quote unquote pay to attend Zoom. All these factors really unbalance the scale when it comes to college decision making. But of course, as time goes on, things may change for the better. Well, that's all for me, Wolfpack. Back to you, anchors. Thank you, Eden. Anyways, yo, Dylan, the this election put a spotlight on the battle for the presidency. 
But there are many topics that did get overlooked. Indeed. Did he hear that Oregon just decriminalized all drugs? No way, did he? For sure. Sam and Isabel got us covered with more info. This is actually pretty interesting. I wonder if Isabel knows about this. Let me call her. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Isabel, did you see Oregon decriminalized all drugs? Uh, yeah, I saw in the news. You think making all drugs legal is a good thing? No, of course not. There's a huge difference between legalization and decriminalization. Decriminalization makes it so instead of getting sent to jail for suffering from a drug addiction, those people will be sent to a government-funded rehab facility to actually cure their addiction. Oh, so this will also prevent people from having jail time on their record, making it easier for them to get a job once they're cured of their addiction. This will actually give them a better chance at life. Yes, correct. But if you get sent to a nice rehab facility every time you do drugs, what's going to stop someone from doing more drugs? Well, drug addiction is not a choice. A few years in jail will not stop someone from doing drugs. Many suffering drug addicts say serving jail time just makes their crave for drugs even stronger, which explains the immense drug abuse problem we are having in America. Well, has any other country done this? Yep, there are actually many countries to look at for precedent. Portugal is the first, and now Switzerland and the Netherlands follow. They all have seen a significant drop of drug use, drug abuse, and drug overdose. So basically, decriminalizing drugs is treating addiction as a disease, which it is, rather than a crime. Yes, exactly. Wow, that actually makes a lot of sense then. Thanks, Sammy. No problem. All right, I'm gonna go sleep for 12 hours. Talk to you later. 12 hours? Yes, it's Thanksgiving break. Okay, Bye. see you, Sammy. Hey, Wolfpack, the one is called Meets meets on the first Friday of every month from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. This is a very difficult time for us wearing a mask, staying six feet, so make sure to join the Wellness Club to connect with the fellow students and have fun. Exactly. And you can access the real classroom with resources on mental and physical health, managing your time and stress, and many more. Join the reminder group for more info. Text at COHS Well to 81010. Today's show has been quite serious, so... You know, how we talked about something more like hard You know, so I'm going to tell you gamers and all you buyers out there well, about this current situation. Like what? Information about the PS5, of course, we've all... You know, Man, I've been trying to get one for weeks. And I'm going to pass it over to myself for more information about it. Take it over, me. The PlayStation 5 comes in two different variations. A digital version coming out without a disc drive priced at $399.00. Prim primarily supporting digital games, while the disc drop disc variation is the one priced at four hundred ninety nine dollars and cent. Following that, there's there's other new features such as the new controller that was released with PS5, which is pretty impressive. The controller creates an immersive experience from the haptic feedback and what's going on. In Footsteps and vibrations can be felt within the palm of hands. New features are of the controller are, are the USB Type-C charging with the adaptive triggers. Depending on what game or item you are using, the trigger will stop at a certain point and when pressed to create a sense of emergency. Some bad news though is following the period of the PS5, as we can see, due to high demand, it was sold out everywhere. Resellers would, would purchase a PS5 and resell the console for hundreds or even thousands of dollars more than the retail price. Upon purchasing the console from retailer sites, scalpers, those who, if you don't know who scalpers are, they are those who sell profit, will flood, they will flood websites to try and purchase these consoles causing sites to crash and run out of stock quickly, making it harder for, for individuals trying to get it for the holiday. It has not been easy, but hopefully the console will be more readily available throughout the retailers in the future as things go. Well, that's all the information I have on the PS5 for y'all. I gotta get back to it. So, back to the anchors. Thank you, Wyatt. That was a lot. You are very much welcome. I am glad to inform you about that. It was very interesting. That's all for today's show, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I am Wyatt Wings, the Landon. And I'm Dylan Brazier. Remember, the strength of the pack is the wolf.
And remember, the strength of the wolf is the pack. Have a fantastic Friday and a great break. And a great Thanksgiving.